everybody. Very excited about today's Kahoot challenge. Here we go. I should be sharing the pin code. Hope Stacy's still here. I remember you from a while ago, Stacy. Never figured out exactly which country you're in. So if you haven't played before, I'm sharing the game pin to today's game. It takes place on the Kahoot app, so you can download that or you can go to the kahoot.com or kahoot.it website. Or you could just scan the QR code on the screen to enter. You might have to put in the game pin and a nickname. So I picked 20 idioms for you today. Some of them are maybe easy, some of them may be hard. Hi, Goshia. Ah, so happy to see you. Such a good student. Today we have three prizes. The grand prize is a private lesson again with me, conversation class. And the two runners up, second and third place, are going to be added to my group on Kahoot, where you can play against each other. You can see all the Kahoots I'm going to assign you. Hi, Donald. Hi, Stacy. So most of you, hi, Tommy, Mia. Haven't seen you before. Okay, I'll start in just a second. Okay, so let me just ask you, why are idioms important? And are they important when you learn English? Yes, idioms are important. You don't necessarily have to use idioms, although English is very, very idiomatic. So you will hear them whenever you hear conversations. If you watch TV, if you watch movies, you need to understand idioms. And there are thousands of them, so you should be a little bit selective on which ones you memorize. Idioms go in and out of style. So I just choose ones that I hear around me all the time for you. Maybe if you learned idioms a long time ago in school, they may be a bit outdated. New ones are always coming up. Okay, I think everybody's in the game. So like I said before, I have 20 questions. They're not all the same format. Most of them are multiple choice. And you have two choices. That means for each question, you have a 50-50 chance to get it right. I also have a poll question and a couple puzzles where you have to order the words to make a sentence. Okay, but I'll guide you through it. You just check the comments if anyone's trying to enter. Okay, if you're having technical problems, tell me now. Otherwise, I'll just start the game. And put this code. Mm. So 172, I'm just going to write it for anyone who joins late, 9167. Okay, and I'll make sure it doesn't cover up the answers. So everybody ready? I'm going to start the game. The first question is not with points. It's actually a poll question. You're supposed to drop the pin in your country so we can see where you are. You can just touch the screen. Let's have a look. 
Wow. Oh, no. Look. Do we have China? Japan. Oh, it must be late for you. I think it's midnight in Japan right now. Bangladesh. Where is that? Egypt? Maybe? Tell me if I'm wrong. Saudi Arabia? Mm, is that Austria? That wasn't me. And I'm, I think it's Algeria. I can't read the names, but I hope I'm halfway right. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Anyway, it's nice to see where everyone's from. No South Americans today. Maybe they'll join later. So the first idiom question, if you are extremely happy or delighted, we could say that you are on two choices, cloud, cloud eight or cloud nine. There's a 30 second time limit. Everybody answered. So the correct answer is cloud nine. I was on cloud nine means I was very, very happy. Donald, very good. 864 points. Samran is next and then Stacy. Go to the next question. So if you're on cloud nine, you're extremely happy. That would be Donald. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Four of you knew this one. Very good. What does it mean? If someone is set in their ways, then it's hard to change them. So we don't use this to talk about dogs. We use it to talk about people. I don't know if you agree. I like to think people can change even if they're a bit older. Now Samran is catching up with Donald and Goshia is in third place. So here we go. If someone would like to join, I have the game pin up on the screen. And you can go to kahoot.com. Oh, look, it's under the screen too, if you want to join. Wow, everyone knew this one. If you want to say something is not very complicated, you say it is not rocket science. Very good. Relativity theory, it's also hard, but we learn it in school. Rocket science is some, it's a phrase we use that represents something very complicated. And usually we use this phrase sarcastically. So if we see someone struggling to figure something out and we wanna be mean, we might say it's not rocket science. It's a little bit, it's a little bit rude. Samran in the lead pushing Donald, who's on fire, to second place, and Goshia has held her third place. Here we go. This is a relatively new idiom. If you've seen The Matrix, you'll know it. If you take the blue pill, you will be either aware of the problem or ignorant, but happy. You answered that so fast. Exactly. So if you have a dilemma, you could either take the blue pill and then you remain ignorant, but you're content. If you take the red pill, that means you find out some information, but you won't be, it's not very pleasant information. Very good. Let's see the score. Donald is on fire pushed Samran down to fourth place and Goshia is in second place. The heat is on. If you throw in the towel, this one's from boxing. You surrender, exactly. If you throw in the towel, it means you give up. You admit defeat. 
Over 50 English idioms come from boxing. I don't know them all. I don't really like boxing. Donald is in first place, Goshia second, Samran third, then Stacy, and fifth, Tommy Mia. Everyone's doing a good job. If you tell your friend to hold her horses, she should, what should she do? Wait patiently or drink less alcohol. She should wait patiently. So if someone's overly eager and has no patience, you can say, hold your horses, hold your horses. Drink less alcohol. I just made that up. <laughs> Sounded good. Goshia is at the lead. Very good. Then Donald and Stacy. Hi, Rafik. You can join on the Kahoot.com app, and the game pin is on the screen. An uncomfortable or unknown situation makes you feel like a bird in a cage or a fish out of water. So an awkward situation, or if you're not in your element, we say, I felt like a fish out of water. A bird in a cage makes sense, but it's not the idiom. So that's the one you'll hear. Now Donald is in first place. Followed by Stacy. Now she's on fire, too hot to handle. And then Goshia in third place. Also, I have, we have an intermission. I have a little intermission on the 10th slide or 11th, I think. Events that happened in the past and no longer matter. This one is a puzzle. So events that happen in the past that we should just forget, they're no longer important, and you order them to make an idiom. 10 seconds remaining. Okay, so the correct answer is water under the bridge. If it's water under the bridge, that means don't harp on past events that you cannot change. So if somebody keeps going on and on and on about something that happened, that any way we can't change, you could say that's water under the bridge. It's not important anymore. I can't tell, can't tell how many people got it right or wrong. Wait, it's a puzzle. Maybe you were thrown off a little bit by the... There's going to be one more puzzle, but it comes at the end. So everything is unchanged. If someone is called a gold digger, it is because they like the casino or marry someone for money. Everyone knew that one. If you knew the film, then it was a big hint for the answer. If you know the name of the film, you can let us know in the comments. Mary, someone for money is a gold digger. Donald's in the lead, followed by Stacy, Tommy Mia, Goshia, and Samran. So here we have a poll. This does not include points. It's just your opinion. How are you doing so far in the game? If you're watching, you can also put your answer in the comments. Two people are doing great. Okay, maybe it's too easy. Most people are doing pretty good, pretty well. Good, I'm glad nobody said not that or don't ask.
If you paint the town red, it means you have a great time. Or blue are a serial killer. It means you have a great time. Let's go paint the town red. That means have a good time, only in the city. It doesn't really work if you're living in the countryside. But to paint the town red is to have a great time. It makes sense for a serial killer, but the idiom refers to having a good time. Donald is still in the lead, followed by Stacy, and Goshia cut up to third place. Hi, Romelia. You were right. You can join the game if you like. On the Kahoot website, the game pin is on the screen. When someone tells you to break a leg, they want you to have good luck. Right, not bad luck. So they don't mean it literally. Usually we use this when someone has a performance. So if they have to perform in the theater or sing, or maybe do a job interview, perform in some way. Break a leg actually means good luck. Good job, Romelia. Okay, Donald's still in the lead. Y'all gotta catch up with him. Goshia's on fire. This GIF also gives a hint to the answer. Rules are made to be broken. Everyone knew that. Gosh, she is catching up. If you do something that harms your own interests, you shoot yourself either in the hand or in the foot. In the foot, very good. This we use in a revenge situation when I'm trying to harm someone else, but I actually harm myself in doing so. For my own objectives, I shot myself in the foot. Donald's in the lead, followed by Goshia and Stacy. And I have to say that Romelia is doing a good job in the comments. I guess she didn't manage to enter the game in time. If someone is not intelligent, they are not the sharpest knife in the drawer or tool in the shed. Tool in the shed is the correct answer. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. It's a common phrase. It means he's not smart. So you knew it was sharp. Sharp stands for intelligent. Here we go. Romelia, it's blurred. Is my screen blurred? Let's see. Something that will probably go wrong or have a negative outcome is a roadmap for catastrophe or a recipe for disaster. A recipe for disaster. Yeah, if something is a bad idea and we're sure it will end in something bad, in disaster, a recipe for disaster. Good, Donald is still in the lead. If you are in a pickle, it means you are in a tricky situation or out of money. Good. In a tricky situation, we also sometimes say in a jam or in a bind.
Good job. Here's another puzzle. You have to put the words into order to make the sentence. If you feel embarrassed for saying something wrong, what do you have? Egg on your face. Very good. Some people might have put face on your egg. <laughs> Anyway, I tried to make it a little bit easier by starting with a capital E. So if you have egg on your face, usually we use that if we insist that something is correct. And then the end, in the end, we get proven wrong. I have egg on my face. It means I feel stupid. I'm embarrassed. Okay, here we go. Second to last one. An obvious problem that people avoid talking about. Either an elephant in the room or a fly in the room. Very good, Romania. Very good. So if there's that one family member who did something very embarrassing or very stupid or bad, and you're meeting all together in the same room, everybody's thinking about it, but nobody wants to bring it up because it could cause some drama. It's the elephant in the room. It's something big that everyone avoids talking about. Stacy, good job. And the last one for your chance to win. If you are acting in a crazy manner, we can say that you are going watermelon or going bananas. Which one do we use? Going bananas. Everybody knew that one. Let's see, it's not only about getting it right, it's also about who was fastest. So let's see, the motherboard, scoreboard, third place, Goshia, yay! Goshia wins access to my Kahoot room, my group, Donald too, and Stacy gets the private lesson with me. I'm so excited. I'll be so happy to meet you, Stacy. Samran, oh, I missed the last one. And no, who was the other one? Samran and uh, 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 uh. no, who was the other one? Someone tell me. Well, I'll figure it out. Um, actually, all all five of you, you can contact me with your email, and I'll give all five of you access to my room on Kahoot. So I can share my Kahoots with you and you can compete against each other and review everything we've done so far. If you weren't able to attend the last Kahoot challenges on Sunday, you could also practice those and learn them and compete against each other. And Stacy, make sure you contact me with your email so we can arrange a time to have a private lesson. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations. I'll do another one. Definitely do at least one more on idioms because I think they are so important. And it's important you use ones that are up to date. And I'll think of the next topic that we'll do next week. You can give me your suggestions if you like. Always open to hear what people want to learn. And I wish you a nice Sunday. Congratulations.